Another topic that needs to be addressed when we look at subsidies is the idea of community surplus and deadweight loss. It's a little bit complicated um, for subsidies. You have some areas that end up overlapping. So if you want, you can go play around with this as I do it. Uh, where we're at is on the one note. About halfway down, it says community surplus and deadweight loss. And you should just double click that icon there and go ahead and open, and it should open up to what you're looking at here. What I've done here is kind of fun, kind of like little puzzle pieces. We're actually, note first, we're looking at an indirect tax. And you could use this as review, but essentially what you can see is you can peel all of these pieces off, and you should be able to identify with each one of these shapes exactly what it's showing. So again, we're saying, well, producer surplus originally was you know, from up the supply curve to the quantity and then over to the equilibrium price, and that would be represented by that blue triangle there. And you could go in and play around and go, okay, well, when the tax is imposed, we see that a certain amount of producer surplus is left, but then some of that, this red area that covers up that blue, is our welfare loss. But like I said, with a subsidy, it's a little bit more complex. There's our finished product. Let me go ahead and take it apart and we'll put it back together. Let's go ahead and start with our original areas of consumer surplus, the green triangle, and producer surplus, the blue triangle. As always, we're going from equilibrium price to equilibrium quantity, down the supply curve for producer surplus, up the demand curve for consumer surplus. The first question we have to ask, let's go ahead and look at consumer surplus first. So I'm going to drag this out of the way for just a minute. For consumer surplus, what we have to go ask is, okay, well, what defines where it is? Well, it's the price the consumers pay to the equilibrium quantity, or at least to the quantity that the consumers pay. So what we see is if we follow the demand curve, we don't get to that price and quantity until way down here. If I bring back the producer surplus triangle, you see a bit of a problem, and it's not a problem conceptually, it's just a problem on the diagram and how we draw that this new area that we're talking about actually overlaps a certain amount of producer surplus, what we can see here underneath the green stripes. So this entire green triangle, and again, pull this away for a second, so this entire green triangle is the new area of consumer surplus, the question is, does this area that is going to overlap the producer surplus, does it take away from the producer surplus? Well, the simple answer is no. So if we look at the demand curve here at a quantity of 40, we see this person was willing to pay a fairly high price of 3.25, but instead didn't have to pay, uh, only had to pay $2. So they get the value plus some extra money in their pocket. Well, that's also true of the supplier at this point. They're not losing anything in this, uh, in this situation, in this scenario, okay? So we are gonna have some overlap, but it's not like what we said with tax or with something else where consumers are taking the producer surplus from the, from the producers. They're both getting the same surplus in the same area. We'll talk about how that's a problem in a second. Okay, well, what about producer surplus? We can see here that we're going to go up the supply curve, but where do we stop? Well, remember, what matters for the producers is this quantity, the new equilibrium quantity of 70, um, it's going to require a price of 4 to get them to produce that much. So producer surplus is going to go all the way up the supply curve to 70 and then over. And again, we're going to see a certain amount of overlap from the new producer surplus and the old consumer surplus. Well, as always, there's got to be some, some welfare loss. And what we're going to see is that this region, this triangle here, it's not part of the new consumer surplus, right? It lies above the demand curve. And it's not part of the new producer surplus because it lies below the supply curve. So what is it? And why is it welfare loss? Let's talk about why it's welfare loss. Let's go ahead and bring it in. 
What we're saying is this area, what it represents, is a place where something is happening. There's some burden on society, but there's no benefit. Remember, our benefit to society is measured by, um, it's measured by producer surplus and consumer surplus. So the burden on society is the fact that the government has to spend this amount of money, this square, they have to spend for all 70 of these quantities, they have to spend $2 to get this to happen. So essentially what is occurring is that the government is spending this amount of money, yet this area in red does not represent any benefit to society. There is an asterisk on this because it is um, a certain amount of producer revenue. I think the point is, is that the producers would have done it for cheaper. So they're not really getting a benefit. Yeah, they're getting the money, but you could have, if, if the government could have figured out a way to only spend up the supply curve and not spend whatever that value is, they would have gotten the exact same effect. So essentially, it's a misuse of taxpayer dollars. And the second you start to think about opportunity cost, these taxpayer dollars, whatever they are, whatever this red triangle is, if it's not giving a direct benefit to anybody or if it's giving too much benefit to producers when they would have done it for less, well then these dollars could have been better used for some other purpose. Go ahead and have a second. Go ahead and open this up and just kind of play around and look at the relationships that you see here. Um, it's kind of a good way to visualize it. When you're drawing this for yourself, obviously it can get quite messy. Um, so make sure that you're being very focused in what you're trying to show because you probably don't need to show everything that I just showed for most questions.